Hello students, this is class 10, science, chapter 12, the name of the chapter is electricity. Students, in this chapter we will be discussing about electricity. So here is the basic overview of the chapters, <coughs> the topics that we will be discussing throughout this lecture. Students, first we will discuss about the definitions. So here are some of the important definitions. Electric current, potential difference, resistance, power, circuits and symbols. Then after that we will discuss about the effect of electric current. Heating effect, magnetic effect, chemical effect. Then we will discuss about the laws in electricity. So two important laws we will study. One is Ohm's law, another one is Joule's law. Then we will move on to connection types. In electricity, we have two different types of connections, resistors in series and resistors in parallel. Then finally, we will talk about the applications of heating effect of electric current. Electric bulb, fuse, heating device like electric iron, toaster, room heater, etc. Students, we all understand the importance of electricity. We cannot imagine our life without electricity. So let's understand the electricity. So first we will discuss the basic definition. The first definition is about the electric current. Students, here is a symbol I. That I symbol stands for the electric current. What is electric current? Flow of electric charge through the cross section of a conductor unidirectionally in unit time is called electric current. Flow of electric charge through the cross section of a conductor unidirectionally in unit time is called electric current. Students, before we understand the definition of electric current, first we'll talk about the this terms charge, cross section, unidirectional, and unit time. What is charge? Students matter has a two important properties mass and charge if two bodies have a mass because of a mass the body exerts a force called a gravitational force just like that if the two bodies have a charge the two body exerts a force it may be a repulsive force it may be attractive force that's electrical force so the property of a matter by virtue of which if a body exerts electrical force of attraction or so repulsion that property of a body is called a charge so charge is something that we cannot touch something that we cannot see charge is the property that we can feel Students, I hope you understood what is the meaning of a charge. We all know two different types of charge exists. One is called positive charge, another one is called negative charge. Charge is a physical quantity. Charge is a physical quantity. Students, we all know about the different type of physical quantities like force is a physical quantity, mass is a physical quantity, weight is a physical quantity, Speed, distance, velocity, acceleration, these all are the physical quantities. So just like that, charge is also a physical quantity. So every physical quantity has a symbol. So charge is denoted by a symbol Q. Charge has a symbol Q. Students, let's talk about this next term now. It's a cross section. What is cross section? Suppose I have a conductor. Suppose I have a conductor. The shape of the conductor is cylinder, cylindrical wire. Let's say I have a cylindrical wire. If I see the face of this cylindrical wire, you know students that a cylinder have a two face. One is curved face, this part. That's a curved face, curved surface. And there's a flat face which is circular. If I see from this end, this flat face will be circular in shape. So, this cylindrical wire have a cross-sectional area circular. We can say circular cross-sectional area. 
if I have a conductor which is cuboidal in shape, this face, if I see from this angle, this face will be rectangular in shape. So I can say this conductor, cuboidal conductor, have a rectangular cross sectional area. So this is what we mean by cross section. Next, unidirectional. Unidirectional means having one direction. Having one direction. So unidirectional. Having one directions. And unit time means unit time may be one second, it may be one minute, or it may be one hour. So now let's student combine all these terms, definitions, and try and understand the definition of electric current. Flow of electric charge through the cross section of a conductor in unidirectionally in unit time. Students, flow of electric charge through the cross section of a conductor unidirectional in unit time means, suppose I have a conductor, in this conductor, here electrons are there. You can see the electrons are randomly moving here and there. This random motion of electrons will not make current. If somehow we make this electrons move in a direction, one particular direction, just like this, movement of electrons in one particular direction means unidirectional motion of electrons through this cross section, through this cross section, makes electric current. Students, one more time. Suppose we have a conductor. In this conductor, electrons are randomly moving here and there. Such type of random motions do not create electric current. If we could make this electrons move unidirectionally, if we could make this electrons move in one direction, the flow of this electrons through the cross section of this conductor in one second, let's say, makes electric current. That's what we mean by this statement. Flow of electric charge through the cross section of a conductor unidirectionally in unit time is called electric current. So that's what the electric current is. Now mathematically, we define electric current as I is equal to Q by T. I stands for electric current, Q is a charge and T is the time. Q is charge, T is time and I is current. So we have this I electric current, that's a physical quantity. Q is a physical quantity, T is a physical quantity. So charge, as I mentioned, charge is a physical quantity. So every physical quantity has a unit, like force has a unit, Newton. Mass has a unit, kg. Weight has a Newton. Work has a unit, joule. Power has a unit, watt. Just like that, charge also has a uh, SI unit. We measure charge in unit called Coulomb. Coulomb is the name of a scientist, Charles D. Coulomb. In his honor, the unit of charge is named as a Coulomb. So, SI unit of a charge is Coulomb. Students, let's see another point. Electric current is a scalar quantity. This electric current is a scalar quantity. We all know what is a scalar quantity. Scalar quantities are those quantities in physics uh, where we are not interested in its direction. We are concerned only with its magnitude, its amount. So electric current is scalar quantity. So if current is a physical quantity, so current should have a SI unit. So in which unit do we measure electric current? SI unit of electric current is ampere. Students, please note, ampere is also the name of a scientist, Andre Mary Ampere. In his honor, the unit of current is named as an ampere. There are smaller units of current. What are those smaller units of current? 1 ma, that's 1 milli ampere, which equals 10 to the power minus 3 ampere and 1 micro ampere, which equals 10 to the power minus 6 ampere. The symbol is called mu, stands for micro. So 1 micro coulomb equals 10 to the power minus 6 ampere. Let's move on to another point. Ammeter is a device. Ammeter is a device that measures electric current. Now let's see students, what is one ampere current? Mathematically, current is 
q by t i is equal to q by t if i want to define one ampere current then in place of i i'll write one a means one ampere equals in place of this q i'll write one c it means one coulomb charge and t it's one second so one coulomb per second say suppose i have a conductor through this conductor if one coulomb of charge flows through this cross section in one second i'll repeat again if one coulomb of a charge if one coulomb of charge flows through the cross section of this conductor in one second we say one ampere current is flowing through this conductor so that's what one ampere current is if a one coulomb of charge flows through the cross section flows through the cross section of a conductor in one second we say one ampere current is flowing through this conductor now student when i say one coulomb of charge how much is one coulomb charge how much is the one coulomb charge to understand one coulomb charge you see here one coulomb charge is made by the collection of 6.25 into 10 raised to 18 electrons that's a huge number now if you want to know how this value we arrived at remember one thing this is what one electron carries a charge of 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb this is the charge carried by one electron one electron carries a charge of 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb so let me just calculate and show you one coulomb equals this many electrons how so suppose i have one electron or let's say 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb means one electrons 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb means one electron or you can say one electron equals 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb equals one electron or we can say one coulomb equals how many electrons 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 electrons if i simplify this so 10 into 10 raised to 19 divided by 16 if you cut this and if you simplify this you'll get the value 6.25 into 10 raised to 18 electron that's how we arrived at this value so one coulomb means 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 electrons so students if you want to make or if you want to give a body one coulomb charge you have to inject 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 electrons into the body or you have to remove 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 electrons from the body so that's a huge number now students we know what is electric current we have discussed a lot about electric current now the next question that comes to our mind is why does electric current flows what's the cause of the flow of electric current the most important condition for the electric current to flow is the existence of potential difference if there is a potential difference then only the current flows if the potential different difference doesn't exist no current will flow so the most important condition for the current to flow is potential difference so we'll understand what is potential difference after some time so before we move on to potential difference let's understand direction of a current just a while ago students i told you i mentioned electric current is a scalar quantity we are not concerned we are not interested in the direction of electric current if we are not interested in direction of current if current is a scalar quantity then why we are talking about electric current's direction so it's important to understand electric current has two important direction one is called electronic current another one is conventional current two different type of current is there on the basis of a direction of a current we can classify the current as a electronic current and conventional current on the basis of the direction so let's understand what is electronic current as the name itself says electronic it means the flow of electrons if the electrons are flowing through the conductor that makes electro electronic current what is conventional current then if there is a flow of a positive charge through the conductor we say the conventional current is flowing students flow of electrons makes electronic current 
and flow of a positive charge makes conventional current. Electrons are negatively charged particles. So flow of negatively charged particles makes electronic current and flow of a positive charged particle makes conventional current. Let's consider this conductor. We have a conductor, you can see the electrons moving unidirectionally through the cross section of this conductor. So this is the electronic current. This is the direction of electronic current. Now let's consider this conductor. In this conductor, we can see the electrons moving towards the right. So this is the direction of electronic current. But if there was a positive charge, the positive charge would have moved towards the left side. So this direction will be the conventional current's direction. So remember student, electronic current and conventional current are always opposite. Electronic current and conventional current always flows in opposite direction. If the electrons are moving towards the right, conventional current direction will be towards the left. If the electrons are moving towards the left, conventional current direction will be towards the right. If the electrons are moving downward, conventional current will be upward. If the electrons are moving upward, conventional current will be downward. So electronic current and conventional current are always opposite or we can say they flows in opposite direction. Students, electronic current exists in real and there is no such current as conventional current. Conventional current do not exist in reality. Whatever the effect of electronic currents, whatever the effect of electricity that we are using, that effect is possible because of electrons flow. Like heating of uh, electric iron, heating of a uh, electric heater, the lighting of the electric bulb. All these effects of electricity is possible because of electrons flow means electronic current so conventional current do not exist in reality so if conventional current does not exist in real then why we should be concerned why we should bother about studying conventional current students conventional current is the assumptions made by our old scientist. In the initial days, when our old scientists, they were studying about electricity, they knew the current's flow. They knew the current flow, but they didn't know the current flows is because of electrons flow. They assumed, they thought that current flow is because of a positive charge and they considered the direction of a flow of a positive charge as a current's direction. But today we know the current is because of electrons flow. So, till today, we follow the direction of a current as a conventional current, current's direction. The flow of a positive charge, direction of a flow of positive charge as the current's direction. Just by simply assuming the flow of a positive charge current's direction as a conventional current's direction does not harm, does not cause any harm. 